I think some of the negative criticism might be from the fact that he's a little harsh sometimes. He's very much got an older person's perspective. So my favorite part was, was it was Mia. She's got divorced parents and a dead yep. grandfather. And he's like, don't cry. Crying's for weaklings. I know it's hard. I know you're troubled. But we've all got problems. So boo freaking who? Yeah. And he was singing her to sleep with us. And it was very funny. But it was very not like helpful and then she's like actually and pulls down a book and tells him crying does this to help you and da, da, da. And he's like hmm, it's really nice. welcome to another episode of is this for kids i'm jonathan beard of i am katie mrs ruby today we are venturing into the world of happy madison productions indeed not Waterboy, not billy madison not the saddest movie of all time click that was not sad but it was great no it was Top five sad movies of all time. We'll get there another time. You don't care about the endings of movies? Just if there's any sad parts? There, th- There's two parts in clicks that like most dads just lose it in. Oh, not 100%. even dads. I was dating my husband when we saw that and he cried. See? See? And he also laughed until he cried. It yeah, because it's such movie. a great movie. Yeah. But an anime, none of those movies, but an animated movie called mm-hmm. Leo that is on Netflix. Yes. And I just want to start by talking about how insane the voice actors were for this. Did you like look it up or notice them? Yeah, Bill Burr. Was, Bill Burr, yeah. obviously Adam Sandler, Jason Alexander, mm-hmm. Joe Coy. Yep. Um, and uh, did you notice that Adam Sandler's entire family acted in this? Well, I don't know. I shouldn't say his entire family, it's but his, his daughter, his two daughters yeah. and his wife were voice acting in this. Yeah. I mean, you just have it made when that's what you're doing. Hey, I'm going to make a movie. We're going to make tons of money on the movie and I'm going to get four of us paid. Yeah, I, I, well. Adam Sandler is I not talking it. about this because, you know, like the whole Nepo baby is a thing. And he's like, I don't care. I built this career. It's my production company. I'll do what I want. And I was yeah. like, yeah, you did. Go for it, Adam Sandler. Yes, I love it. I didn't know his wife and kids were actors and voice actors, but his his kids are both in like movies that are apparently really, really good as well. Yeah. The, um, the Ba you're Mitzvah. Not advised, some, mitzvah. Have you seen that one yet? I haven't. I haven't either, but I want to watch it now. I think we want to do it for the podcast. We need to because yeah. it was it was like, in t- I looked up like top five Adam Sandler movies to see what people thought. And that one was in almost every yeah. single ranking. My so. kids uh, said it was really good. So. Well, then we need to watch it. My but old too, okay. I have to ask you this. Where does Leo rank all time on your Adam Sandler movies? Okay. So Adam Sandler sort of breaks down into two portions of his career. You've got your early Adam Sandler, and then you've got like from click onward, right? Yeah. Where like he does a few family movies. So everything in the early st- uh, stuff was funny to me as a kid, but I would put that at the very bottom of Al- Adam okay. Sandler's pile. He's only gotten better with age. He's like a fine wine Ooh. or an Italian cheese. Um, anyway. <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> Delightful. Um, so I would say that Leo, as far as kids movies are concerned, Leo is my number one Adam Sandler kid movie. Um, so way up there. But um, the uh, shortly after that would be stuff like Click or the, what is it? The dad movie. Grown Ups. My husband Grown Ups. Loves Big Daddy. Uh, Big Daddy was good, but it's like sort of a bridge yeah. movie. Like I never saw Wedding Singer and I never saw Punch Drunk Love, but apparently that people way. love those. Uh, Wedding Singer is, is more into the younger thing. Okay. But Murder Mystery 1 and 2 are both on Netflix yeah. as well. Those are hilarious. With Jennifer Aniston, right? Yes. Yeah, with Jody and I like those too. They're so good. So. And Crazy Nights? I actually haven't seen that one. So. Oh my gosh. I can do... But he does... He's... That's a technical file! You have to watch it. That was actually a really good impression. <laughs> Everything he has done in the last, like... 10, 15 years, I feel like he's knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Just every he's single crushing thing. life. Leo ends up in my top five. Yeah. So like Big Daddy, Happy Gilmore, uh, <laughs> Click. Not to mention... Leo, there's, there's this Eight whole, Crazy Nights. whole thing among moms right now that are like, some moms go to pick up looking like this and I go looking like Adam Sandler. Um, you've seen me in meetings when we're not here. Yep. I look like Adam Sandler most yep. of the time. I've got a giant t-shirt and basketball shorts. Like, it's fun. It's a good time. Love Adam Sandler. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Awesome. He did a great job. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Jody and I were cracking up during Leo. So, this is how this went for me. I think I may have already said this on an earlier episode of us recording. But mm-hmm. uh, I, typical John fashion, waited last minute and saw Garfield, Inside Out 2, and Leo all in the same seven hours. Was your butt numb? A little. Yeah. The seats are comfy. I purposely don't go to IMAX because IMAX don't have comfy seats by, by me. Oh. They're like normal seats to put a huge screen but then like the smaller screens have the recliners so yeah i have the regal cinema with the reclining seats look at you and so that my regal has half and half 
oh. half reclining, half not. So I'll have to figure that out. But um, Jody, I, like, I got home from the movies and I was like, hey, I got to watch one more. Um, it's called Leo. And the reviews I read were not great for some reason again. Really? I'm, yeah. I'm like, I didn't what? read the reviews. Rotten Tomatoes actually does give it good reviews. But some other stuff I was reading, I was like, eh. I, was like I don't know if you're going to like it. We were laughing so hard. I mean, it was so good. I'm so glad we watched it together. The premise is fascinating. I think it does a good job of explaining like what growing up now is kind of like and mm-hmm. it kind of nails the culture um so why don't you explain a little bit of leo which you can yeah. find on netflix so leo is the story of a class pet he is a lizard of somewhat indeterminate species i think he's like a iguana slash chameleon he changes colors but he's also looks like an iguana it's difficult to tell you what kind of lizard he is but he hears that he's only going to that his life expectancy is 75 years and he finds out after doing the math for how many years he's been in this classroom since the 1940s that he is in fact 74 years old and that he is in his last year of life and not wanting to go out without having any sort of legacy he decides that when the kids start taking him home on the weekends that he's going to talk to them and, and and hear their their problems and, and he's going to leave a mark on these kids and so he starts talking to all the kids and helping them with their problems and giving them advice and the class flourishes yeah he kind of saves the kids he saves the kids if you will so there you go did you know this was uh netflix's largest animated release ever with 96 million views I did not know that. It did. As wow. well as of May of 2024. So if you're watching this after May of 2024 and something huge has come out, this might not be true anymore. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, what'd you think? I mean, I, I thought it was hilarious. You liked it. Yes. I thought it was great. When you were talking about the overarching themes of growing up, he has this. So because he's been in the classroom for so long, he has this understanding of what it used to be to be a fifth grader and what it is to be a fifth grader now. But what is constant from time immemorial, kids wanting to blend in with other kids, you know, kids wanting to be the cool kid, kids liking to talk about themselves instead of someone else. Um, He's able to, like, pick out what is you know true from all time and then kind of work with what's different and then we did get to see some sort of uh let's go stereotypes of current parenting yep yeah which kid did you feel like was uh was your favorite which kid yeah which one you know the kid probably that probably the first one who just wouldn't stop talking summer yeah summer like i just i always i always feel have such a soft spot in my heart for kids like that Mm -hmm. um and it's yeah it was just a funny constant throughout the entire movie like the references they're making his face <laughs> like everyone kind of made a face when she just kept talking she was great i felt horrible for the uh the kid that had crazy helicopter parents with Eli. a drone he has a drone following him around i thought the drone was super dope i wish the drone would follow me around and yeah. like cut my steak and stuff but those parents were crazy crazy yeah. I, the parents the worst parents were the um the rich ones Ah, yes. Jada's right? parents. Overly indulgent, spoiled kids. Yeah. Yeah. That song that, that Leo sings <laughs> is the clocks. so, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> and then the clocks leave and he won't tip them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. And some of the advice that Leo gives to them is, is very much grandpa advice. Like to Summer, um, Summer is a kid who talks constantly. Like she's very much me. She talks constantly. Right. And And he gives her the advice. He says, letting other people talk about themselves helps them like being around you more yeah. and you'll see like if you go through instagram right now there's a lot of people being like oh well you know how it's it's normal in certain sets of personality types that if somebody tells you a story and you tell them a story similar from your life like that's just you trying to relate to them uh, i think that we've leaned too hard into that that like we need to accept that you know when you say oh last weekend i climbed mount everest and i reply i did it two years ago without oxygen yeah like great but you are one-upping and it does make it difficult to want to be around you so we are like yes you know learn to 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 accept when people do that and don't be so harsh about it but also stop doing that yeah like a little bit of both a yep. little bit of both which seems to be really the theme of this movie is take some advice from the younger people take some advice from the older people yeah overall i just thought it was awesome now there are some in my opinion there were some weird innuendos in the movie oh that did not belong. And I'm going to go like three, four or five of them. They were was, all Bill Burr's character too. Yes. And yeah. they were all 
hilarious. This is Ruby. Yeah. Didn't you just get Millie a new phone? Yeah. So this is not our first time introducing phones. We've got two older kids and we made so many mistakes with the oldest one. And then we made new and interesting mistakes with the second one. But I think we might have cracked the code with this third one. Have you heard of the Bark phone? I have. Okay. It's super, super easy to set up. You kind of go in there and say like, what do you want to be alerted to? Do you need to know if your kid got a skinned knee? Do you need to know if your kid's being bullied? Does your kid have access to these apps? Do you even want to give them access to the Google Play Store, that kind of thing. The Bark phone does it all on one thing and then it alerts me through the Bark app on my phone. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's so much faster. And the main thing was that like, we really didn't want her to have access to apps until maybe even high school at this point, based on our other experiences we've had with our kids. But she was so embarrassed at the idea of getting a flip phone. Bark phone looks just like every other kid's phone out there on the market. And she was delighted to get it. She's like, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to get a brick. And she got this nice high tech, good yeah. camera phone. Good for Millie. As soon as my kids are old enough, I'll be doing the exact same thing. I just got to get her to stop taking selfies. Good luck. They were was, all Bill Burr's character too. Yes. And yeah. they were all hilarious, objectively funny. I was laughing out loud. Yes. And then thought to myself, but why does it have to be in a kid's movie? Like it just, I don't mm. love it. We talk about this kind of all the time. Yeah. I don't love when there's a bunch of innuendo in a kid's movie at the same time, all of those in this one in particular are absolutely going to go over your kid's head. Yeah, I think that's one of the things we lost as a culture when we stopped having um, sort of like, I, I can only think of like lies that we tell our children. Like, you know how you tell your kid, like, don't do that. You're going to get hairy palms. Like, yeah. That doesn't mean anything. And probably, you know, teenagers nowadays were never even told that lie. So then when you hear it in a movie where they're like, oh, well, that guy's got hairy palms, like every adult gets it because we knew what that innuendo meant. So when Bill Burr says, you got to buy me dinner first. Right. We realize that he's making a, a joke, but the kids don't. Right. So I think we need to bring back those kinds of like random things that only the adults will get because it has no sexual connotation outside of it yeah i i only i think i mostly agree there um i, I do i this is so adult that you're right like the kids are just not going to get it like there are yeah. some movies where the the, the kid's going to ask questions and like even that is kind of annoying but in here probably not and there's not in this movie they're not even that quotable mm -hmm. um so i it's not that big of an issue but i did think it was just interesting that at the same time this uh, this movie doesn't feel like it was really made just for kids it really feels like it was made for adults and kids equally to watch together which, uh, which is i think awesome yeah um i will say like one thing i want to bring up that like parents should be aware of because I'm going to watch, Jody and I loved this movie, and we are going to watch it with all of our children mm -hmm. uh, very soon. And we're going to have to, Jody and I are just going to have to have an answer for the question that one of the kids asks the turtle, um, which is, where do babies where do come babies from? Where do babies come from? And the turtle says, the daddy gets on the mommy turtle the and water. immediately says, in, in the, the water. water for 24 hours. And then the mommy turtle <laughs> Bury go, her. buries her eggs in the sand. And I mean, Jody and I are literally in tears laughing at this. And this kid's so like, what? what? So it doesn't get eaten by the fish. I mean, it was <laughs> so funny. But like that is, it was such a, it was such a pertinent question that yeah. like I could see our kids after the movie being like, where do you babies come from? And so as a parent, just be aware that that question might come up uh, if you have curious yeah. kids, because mine will. And then uh, and then just whatever your answer is going to be for whatever age your kid is, just be ready to share that answer. Yeah, they don't drag that joke out long enough that like it doesn't get brought up again at the end of the movie. So I hope or hopefully your kids will have forgotten it by then. Or maybe that's just when you decide to teach your kids where babies come from. Yeah. Whatever. That's fine, too. Um, but like I specifically asked after the um, you're going to buy me dinner first joke, I paused the movie and looked at my 10 year old son. He's almost 10. He's nine. Um, birthday's next week. And I said, what does he mean by that? And he's like, well, you can't just go in somebody's house if you've never even had dinner with them. And I was like, true. That's true. 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 Keep going. Like, he didn't get it. So it was perfectly fine. But some of the, I think some of the negative criticism might be from the fact that he's a little harsh sometimes. He's very much got an older person's perspective. So my favorite part was, or was it was Mia. She's got divorced parents and a dead yep. grandfather. And he's like, don't cry. Crying's for weaklings. I know it's hard. I know you're troubled. But we've all got problems, so boo freaking who? Yeah. And he was singing her to sleep with us, and it was very funny, but it was very not, like, helpful. And then she's like, actually, and pulls down a book and tells him, crying does this to help you, and da-da-da. And he's like, hmm, good to know. Yeah, and she... It really it, does help. As the song was happening, Jody looked at me, and she's like, oh, why, like, this is, why is that? That's horrible advice. But then she even says to him, like, oh, you're just teasing me like my grandpa did. Yeah. You just, you knew that... Like, so she turned it, it was a perfect it moment was perfect. in the movie. It's like when you've got, you tend to get this advice from older, or sometimes you'll get advice from older people that is based on a way of thinking that we don't embrace anymore as right. a culture. And 
it's okay to listen to them and not think that they're a bad person because right. of it. Like if your grandma thinks that she, you need to spank your kids, thanks grandma. I appreciate that you care about my kids enough to, to, to take that. You don't have to take her advice and you also don't need to cut her out of your life because of right. it. Like it's just, people are different. Yeah. Things. And your grandma doesn't have young kids anymore. So you don't need to even correct her. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. Thank you. So great. Like she's not, she's not going out to parent anybody anymore. <laughs> right. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I already forgot what it was like to have babies and mine was only three. Yeah. So like imagine. Exactly. Just imagine. The the language in the movie was mild. It's mostly words you just don't want your three or four year old saying, shut yeah. up, stupid, things like that. But like yeah. such a minor part of the movie. Um, really not bad. I think like four, five, six, anyone, if you can sit, like you, like you say, if you can you sit, sit through a movie, movie, this one, I think so. I think there's a book, by the way, called Humphrey. Have you heard of this book? No. It's about a, a, a hamster or a gerbil or something. My wife reads it to the kids and it's a, he's a, a class pet. Yeah. And they all take him home and like he, it's basically the same thing. I think thing. my kid brought home a Humphrey once. Yeah. I wonder if like, the, I wonder if yeah. there's anything out there about how Leo stole that idea from Humphrey because it really is very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's anyway it's kind of like that but i think if your kid can sit through it and just it, it's it was such a good movie watch it with your family let us know what you think yeah i think that i agree with you that it's good for any age that can sit through a movie but specifically if you have a fifth grader watch this movie with your fifth grader they're about to go into middle school and the overarching themes of listening and talking like the last one of the last lines of the movie is um, everyone's scared don't keep it to yourself find your leo to talk to yeah. Just find something to talk to. The main thing in parenting is keeping your kids talking. 100%. Awesome. Hey, if they liked this episode, where could they find more? Is this for kids.com. You can give us five star ratings all over the podcast Just world. Like, subscribe, over. comment on YouTube and Instagram. Yeah, we haven't gotten any new comments on our Apple podcast uh, ratings since like February. So somebody needs to comment something. Time to push that on the stream. I know. I'm a big fan of comments. And uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button down there, whatever it is you're doing. And, uh, you know, there's just so much content out there for us as parents. I'm Jonathan Beard of Blovins. I'm Katie, Mrs. Ruby. Let us help you decide. Is this for kids?